Just hold on. It's not advancing. Oop. There we go. Again, <laughs> introduction, Jason Huff, my every night. Um, before we get started, I just want to go over our commitment to racial equity. Uh, the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture commits to an anti-racist work practice that centers the creativity and leadership of people of color, the most impacted by structural racism, to, to move towards systems that benefit us all. We also acknowledge that we occupy the traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, whose ancestors resided here since time immemorial. This acknowledgement does not take place of authentic relationships with indigenous communities who are very much still here. Um, yes, so uh, if you are, are not familiar with uh, Seattle's 1% for Art Ordinance, um, back in 1973, the city uh, developed this ordinance and it's one of the first in the nation. And so, yeah, we're one of the oldest program, but um, this ordinance was uh designed so that you know the city accepts the responsibility of expanding public experience with visual art um and so we took on that responsibility so that we can put art uh throughout the city um in our streets in our parks in our public facilities um also that also that people can have uh interaction with art on a daily basis. And so um, this is something that we uh, in the office, our project managers take very seriously and making sure that you know we work not only just presenting artwork to communities, but also having communities be a part of the art making so that it's not just something that we are bringing towards, bringing, bringing to the community. It's something that we're all building together. And so, um, you know, we're all very proud of the work that we do, and we're glad that many art, like, artists like you are here tonight to, to join us, join our office, and sort of seeing how we kind of, again, continue to evolve and change and uh, build a better city. Okay, I'm sorry. Computer. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I'm having technical problems. I have an old, old surface that I'm working on today. Um, goals of our program, uh, you know, we work collaboratively, collaborative, collaboratively to integrate artworks and the ideas of artists into the public, public realm. Uh, you know, again, we provide access to our experiences, uh, create a sense of place and community, ameliorate the public's experience of the public realm, enhance built environment and increase livable, increase livability of the city. Um, and those who we collaborate are artists, city planners, communities, and we also work with the Seattle Arts Commission, which has a subcommittee, the Public Art Advisory Committee that oversees our office and offers us guidance. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Maya, who will then I'll go over the EV charging station project. Wonderful, thank you, Jason. Um, yeah, so the rest of the program tonight, um, I'm gonna give a quick project overview. Um, go through the call to artists, the project details, um, talk through the application and the submittable platform, um, as well as some general application tips, as well as go um, leave lots of time for question and answers. Um, some of the two kind of two things I wanted to mention as well um, is that this session will be recorded. It is being recorded right now, um, and it will be made available to you after the fact. Um, if you registered for this workshop, um, you will receive it in your inbox, um, and it will also be attached to our overall call to artist opportunities on our website, so you can refer back to it if needed. Um, and two, um, there is the chat or Q&A feature as part of um, WebEx, which you are welcome to use. Um, please know that we are not able to access it while we're in present mode, and so, but we will be able to look through um, following the, the presentation um, and go through questions um, as we can following. Um, I'll also note an accessibility feature of WebEx um, on your screen on the lower left corner. There's a little closed captioning um, indicator that will allow you to choose um, closed caption in, in either English or a variety of different languages. So you're welcome to um, use that feature as well. Um, so I'm going to jump right in and also would like to um, 
introduce um, joining us as well that I'll um, be able to bring into the conversation as part of this agenda in a little bit. Jacob Orenberg is a um, as part of the panelist um, and will be is the C City Light representative for this project and will be able to be able to be on hand as well for questions regarding this project. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and so, as Jason mentioned, as part of our um, our percent for art and um, what we do in terms of public art is we work with our different agencies within city, city of Seattle. Um, and this project is a city light project and as part of the electrification and transportation. Um, within City Light, this is a really important field of work um, and I just included their website here to be able to kind of dig a little deeper to be able to, um, if you're interested to understand kind of the wide breadth of work that is happening and that they are um, actively working on to um, expand this field. Um, next slide, please. This project specifically has kind of two components to it. Um, the first component being these EV chargers, so they're, they're curbside charging stations. Um, this initiative was started a couple of years ago and it was a broad-based um, outreach appeal to individuals to be able to nominate their own locations to be able to host a um, charging station within their um, right away in front of their house. Uh, um, an apartment complex business and whatnot. Um, so these are being currently being placed throughout the city of Seattle in a variety of different locations. The, some of the forms look slightly differently, but there are 13 that look approximately similar to this one that you see on screen. Um, and excited to be able to work with City Light to make this into an art opportunity. Next slide, please. Um, similarly, on the City Light website, there's a whole website dedicated to this project um, in which you're able to dig into a little bit deeper if you so choose. Um, next slide, please. The second part of this project that I mentioned is charging lots. And so this is a parking lot that has multiple charging stations all in one location. Um, within this project, there's two, specifically one that's an existing lot that's by the South Service Center. Um, and then one that is currently being built in West Seattle at Morgan Junction. Um, next slide. And similarly, on the C City Light website, there is a um, website dedicated to the Morgan Junction one that has a little bit more renderings and information about this specific site. Next slide, please. And so in, in consideration of this type of project and wanting to support the different infrastructure in those different locations, um, thinking, being creative about how we would approach this really kind of looked backwards to some of our current, our recent projects that we have completed that we used existing infrastructure to be able to work with artists to collaboratively beautify, make more interesting, really resonate with the community in which it sits. Um, and so you can see different examples of ground, uh, ground plane thermoplastic, wraps within on utility and metro boxes, fence displays, cut out metal attached to signs, backs of signs, as well as wrappings on um, cement bollard materials. Next slide, please. And so that kind of visual inspiration kind of led into what, how we scoped this specific call. So in looking again now at the charging, um, charging pedestal specifically, some of the opportunities that we'll be looking at for these specific um, physical infrastructures are that concrete base. Oops, the concrete base itself is about a foot high or so, um, and it's square in dimension. And so that could be a potential canvas, as well as a somewhat large scale metal conduit that comes out the side, as well as the back side of the charger. Like in this example, it's facing the sidewalk. Um, could be potential placements for art. The one thing I will notice um, note on this as well is that the green graphics um, on the front side needs to remain. So that's not that's going to remain as is. It's those other locations as indicated that would be an art opportunity for the selected artists. Um, similarly, with a parking lot, um, lots of kind of existing infrastructure that could be creative canvases, the ground plane of the entire surface, the different curb stops. Um, for the parking spots, backs of signs, the signs themselves, adjacent fencing, um, utility con can excuse me, utility cabinets, as well as bollards, and again, the charging um, stations themselves in this location. Next slide, please. And so with that, that's kind of a general project overview. 
Um, I wanted to maybe pause and Jacob, is there anything that you wanted to mention specifically about the project? I uh, know Maya, you did a great job explaining it all. I have nothing to add. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. We'll go back. So next I'm going to just jump right into the kind of the nitty gritty of the, the application, the eligibility and the call details. Um, and so for eligibility for this project, this is a project for regional artists from Washington, Oregon and Idaho. We have designated that this is a, um, we encourage emerging artists to apply. It's not defined in this instance, but because of the, the, um, the monetary scale, as well as it being a design only project, I feel it's a really great opportunity for individuals who don't necessarily have a ton of experience in public art to be able to um, apply to be able to um, have, have that um, potential opportunity. Um, we've also limited it if you have received a commission over $100,000 or more um, for either being an individual artist or artist team that is in eligibility for this project. The overall budget, as I mentioned, this is a design only project. And so the contracted fee for the selected artist will be $15,000. That will be to research, come up with a concept, go through a review for that concept and create that concept that then is will be graphically reproduced. Then it, uh, it will be turned over to the Office of Arts and Culture and the project manager to then implement and coordinate any sort of fabrication details. Most all of the applications methods are through probably likely a third party vendor, final application, thermoplastic, painting of the ground. And so that that would be something that would be handed over for the, the facilitation and logistics of implementation. Um, and that budget is um, $70,000 that we have designated for the implementation portion. Next slide, please. Um, application deadline is Monday, June 10th, so it's just about four weeks away now at 5 p.m. Um, and I'll just emphasize to please try and do it earlier than that. It's like Murphy's Law um, that things happen at the last moment, technological issues come up, and so um, early application is definitely encouraged. The selection process itself will take um, take place in two parts that um, you'll submit your application and we convene a selection panel that will review all those applications and invite individuals to interview um, for that. Um, at the, the selection panel will then recommend one individual to receive the commission that goes through both our public art advisory committee and is ultimately approved by our arts director. Um, everyone will receive a notification of the results by September of this year. Next slide, please. Um, so within the application, you can apply either written or using audio formats. All of our um, submissions are done through our submittable pl um, platform, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, I'll just note here that if you do choose to submit using audio or video, it's really not intended to be a highly produced video. It's really intended if you feel more comfortable representing yourself verbally versus in a, in a written format. Um, but the application components include a statement of interest, a biographical statement. Um, the biographical statement is a replacement for kind of the, for the traditional resume and really just an opportunity to talk about your, your background, whether that's lived experience or professional experience. Um, and then work samples um, of uh, maximum eight work samples and the associated description of that image um, in the list here on the screen. It's described as work sample metadata. Next slide, please. Um, you can find this call. It's on our, um, you, you're here, and so you probably are on our uh, email distribution list, um, but you can also go to our website and click the opportunities link, and it is listed there, which will then um, take you directly to our submittable um, application portal. Next slide, please. From there, in submittable, if you don't don't have an account, you can easily make one. Um, no fee required. It is just purely your name, password, um, and some basic information. Um, if you do have an account, purely sign in. Um, the first series of questions are just to indicate that eligibility, as we reviewed previously, um, if you live in Washington and if you've received a large scale commission or not. Um, within these, there's kind of the yes or no. Um, if it, if there is question in um, if, if something's kind of fuzzy or gray um, and you want to 
connect with me to confirm eligibility, um, please do contact me. The very last slide of this presentation has my contact information as does uh, it's listed on our website. And so if there are specific questions, I definitely encourage you to reach out. Next slide, please. Um, so I'm just going to take you one, one screen at a time through the application pretty quick, but um, application name, of course, basic information, and we love, would love to hear from you how you heard about this opportunity. This really helps us um, plan for future opportunities and develop marketing outreach strategies for, for the future. Next slide, please. Um, and this is the, the meat of the application. So uh, the very first question is written or audio. So this is the written format toggle that you have a text box for both letter of interest and biographical statement. With this, we definitely suggest that you do this ahead of time in a Word document, both to be able to do a word count as well as having it have spell check added in. Submittable does not have either of those features. Um, and so doing it in a separate document and copying paste it into this document is definitely advised. Next slide, please. And this is the screen you'll see if you hit on audio or video format. Um, we accept these via web link. And so any sort of hosting site, whether it be YouTube, Vimeo, or other, um, you can upload it to that and then send us the link. And then also an area if it is password protected to include that information as well. So we're able to access it. Next slide, please. Um, then work sample inst instructions. So these are images of existing work, um, not proposals, just existing work that you have done already. Um, this is relatively intuitive by choosing your file, navigating to wherever it lives on your computer or your hard drive and uploading it to the portal. Next slide, please. You'll be, you'll be automatically, um, a window will automatically come up, I think. We skip past one. And um, this is the metadata portion that it asks you a series of questions about that work. Title, date, commission amount, project role, brief description of work sample. If the, any of those areas are not applicable, you can either leave them blank or put it in A. Um, I would say definitely take the time to think about the brief description of work sample. I'd say Generally, this is probably the most underutilized aspect of any of our applications that we do receive. It's really an opportunity to describe and share and showcase what about that image you feel is specifically relevant to this call, what you, what you want to share with the panel and see as part of that image or explain further of what we're seeing um, in, in that work sample that you upload. Um, and so with each image that you upload, you'll get this same same menu um, and you can you can edit and revise as as you wish to best fit the fit the project. Next slide, please. Great. We then have a whole series of demographics demographic questions. There's a series of 11 demographic questions. These are not used, used nor seen by the selection panel members. These are really just used internally to be able to better um, strategically know who's applying to our calls um, and um, how that varies from call to call and how we can plan for the future. So I highly encourage you to Fill, fill out this section and just know that none of the none of this information is seen nor shared with any of the selection panelists. Next slide, please. And then the very last thing as part of the application is this little check mark towards the very end. It's like I agree with terms of use. If you click on that, you can get a page of what all those are. Then you can either save draft or you can hit apply. Once you apply, you can't bring it back, um, but you can save draft and continue to fine tune um, and then hit apply when you when you feel your application is complete. All right, next slide, please. Um, once we receive, we'll be going through the selection process in early August, um, we convene a selection panel um, of, of artists and community members to review all the applications. The criteria that they'll be thinking about and looking at as they review your work is quality of concept design, craftsmanships of past works, relevance of the statement of interest, um, aesthetic that could be digitally reproducible. As I mentioned before, almost all of the um, 
artworks that we assume will be part of this project will be created digitally and then reproduced on a different item. And so really looking at um, artwork that potentially has graphic elements that could be printed on vinyl, thermoplastic, and other materials that will have that readability um, in that different format. Um, proven ability to coordinate and collaborate with project managers, design professionals, and community stakeholders. And finally, demonstrated ability to complete projects on time and within budget. Next slide, please. Then lastly, um, the, the overall project timeline, of course, we're having our information session today. We're in the application time period. The deadline for applications is Monday, July 10th. Um, we'll go through the application or the review process rather in August. Everybody will receive a notification in September. Um, the work of the selected artists, October through February, will be the time for um, site visits, meetings with the project team, any sort of community engagement, research about fabrication, developing cost estimates, and putting together an overall concept for the artwork. This then will then go through a series of review. And from March to May, the artist will work on a final artwork and an installation plan to then hand over to the city. The city then will work to implement these, um, th these artworks throughout the summer in 2024. I will also mention that this project is a temporary project. So it's considered a five-year temporary project, both for the material use that we assume, as well as the lifespan of some of these chargers. Um, and so that is kind of the um, lifespan expectation of the, of the material that we'll be looking at as well. Next slide. Some general application tips. I mentioned some throughout the presentation today, but we definitely encourage you to submit that application before the deadline. Um, you know, Mur Murphy's Law computer doesn't work. Something went wrong with submittable. Um, images came out fuzzy and you need to retake all sorts of things. So please just consider um, applying early to this. Um, again, we recommend using Word or Word Processor program to write your information and then copy and paste into the application. Submittable just doesn't have the ability to do word count or any sort of spell check. We also suggest that you have somebody review your responses for any sort of grammar errors or typos, um, as well as somebody who can read it um, from the outside looking in to make sure that it kind of makes sense to someone who might not be as familiar with your work as you are. Um, the next one is very similar to the other one um, that just have someone, oops, you trust to review um, your work samples and descriptions. And do just know that the review process is relatively fast. Um, the panelists are able to see the images on a, on, uh, on a large scale screen relatively quickly. Um, and so try and be clear and succinct whenever possible. This is true with the, art, the artist statement as um, the biographical statement, as well as the descriptor of the image in your metadata information. Um, and please do know that our opportunities are pretty competitive. And so um, we definitely encourage you to apply again if you don't get it this time um, and look for other, oper other op upcoming opportunities as well. Great, and so the last slide is basically just my information. So um, again, my name is Maya McKnight. My phone number and email is below. It's also posted on the website as well. And so if there are any specific questions um, that come up that don't get answered tonight, I encourage you to contact me um, and more than happy to uh, talk on the phone or through email or whatever, whatever best works for you. And that concludes my presentation. Um, we have a lot of time left for questions and would be happy to <laughs> take those via writing in the chat. Or if there's a question that you'd rather verbalize, we have the ability to unmute you to be able to access your um, microphone.
Okay, and I see a whole bunch coming in. Um, so I'm going to start. So we are only selecting one artist for this opportunity, and so we'll work with one commissioning art, one artist um, um, from the application process. Yes. Um, if we have no public works done, is it okay to do a mock up and submit that as one of the work samples? That's a that's a really great question. And generally, we don't advise taking the time to do a rendering for a project. Um, you won't have the opportunity to necessarily go to all the sites, meet with the project managers and the different stakeholders to kind of get a sense of what their hopes and restrictions and ideas are for this project. And so if you happen to do a rendering that doesn't align with those goals, it's automatic no in some instances. And so it's also a way to that we don't want you doing a ton of unpaid work for something that might or might not happen. And so we definitely encourage you to pull from past work samples um, and use that description line item to potentially draw out elements of what you might use as part of this project. Um, and so if you have an example of a past work, absolutely appropriate would be to have in that description say, this is a great example of a approach that I would likely want to take for this project and maybe a little bit more detail about whatever that is, but I wouldn't um, do a do a specific rendering or proposal for this project. Um, can artist teams apply? That is a great question. Yes, they can apply. Um, as part of artist teams, the the application is a little bit, um, you'll want to be able to include information about all team members and what each of those team members roles would be. Um, for instance, if you have a team of somebody who um, is um, more of a pen and paper, paper person and you have someone who's more of a computer person and you're teaming up to be able to have that be a strong cohesive application. We just want that explained to be able to definitely understand if you have any sort of examples of when you've worked together before and what that produced. Um, generally, when we're looking though at work samples and artist teams, we want to know what aesthetic is going to be produced. And so if there's one lead artist and one support artist, uh, that can all be explained as part of the as part of the applications. Um, another question, if two or more apply as a team, how is that handled as part of the application? So that's somewhat similar to the last question. Um, within submittable, however, what we do ask is that there's a name of one individual. So that lead person um, is, the, is the applicant and then list those team members as well. Um, it's also as part of our contracting process is that we wouldn't issue a contract for three people. That team would need to determine who that lead person is and the, that main coordination and contracting and money transfer would happen through that one individual. And then the team would have to have a, um, an agreement amongst themselves of how that would work internally within them. Um, let's see, is there a word count for the artwork descriptions? There is and it is on um it's a part of the application it's also on our pr um, presentation and i can't remember off the top of my head um so jason would you be able to click that presentation back up to that slide that shows the word count and then while that's being worked on here's another question how specific do you want this statement of interest this the statement of interest is really kind of up to you. Like we don't, we don't want a proposal. We want to hear why this is uh, this this project is appropriate to your body of work. Um, why it's relevant to to how how and what you do. Um, but but also brief. So it's kind of it's kind of tricky. We want a lot of information, but not too much information. But generally, we want to hear. How, how this project is suitable for what you do and is a good fit for your kind of artistic practice is the is the heart of it. Um, if there are 15 stations, I assume all pieces will be different. 
Um, and so this this side question I think refers to the charging stations. Um, Jason, can you flip? Oh, I'm sorry. Before you do, um, so how how many words is the statement of interest? Letter of interest, 200 words, and biographical statement, 300 words. Um, with that as well, if you're doing video or audio, there's a time time estimate as well for each of those. Um, and submittable platform does cut you off, and so if it's over that, you can't enter any more care. You can't enter any more words after that limit. Um, and then next, so the 15 stations all different. Um, and so not not necessarily. So within the EV chargers, and Jason, if you wouldn't mind flipping back to the picture of the charging. So the the charging um, pedestals themselves are all the same. They are they are all in different neighborhoods and kind of different site locations. Most all of them are within the right of way. Um, so operated by Seattle Department of Transportation. We are limited to the structure only. We can't, um, this project doesn't allow for nor have the budget for any sort of like separate item as part of this, like so a foundation next to the charger we're not able to do. Um, and so whether those designs on all the backs of the EV chargers are different or on the pedestals are all different or all the same, it's to be it's to be determined. It's really going to be kind of a um, a process of determining um, priorities of where that artist feels most important, the money goes towards. And so if they if they after kind of a fact finding, um, scouting adventure of going and seeing some of the site locations where they are. I feel it's really important to do some sort of pedestal treatment that's each different to the neighborhood. That could be an approach that would be more money than and leave less for other things. And but that's just a decision and it would be all be a conversation with the state, the stakeholder group with Seattle City Light and myself. Um, and so it's it's not defined, um, but it's definitely Either, either way is possible, whether it's all the same or each one being different. Um, and the next question is kind of a slight variation of that that I think I covered as well. Um, is it better to show images that show a strong singular style versus a variety of art styles? Um, for this project specifically, um, well, I, I think there's of two minds. For this project specifically, however, I would probably advise if you have the work samples available to be able to curate the images that you submit that are most closely aligned with what you feel might be most appropriate or the direction you might want to take for this type of project. So, for instance, if you work in ceramics and you work in digital art, you wouldn't necessarily want to choose your ceramics examples for this project. And that's a little um, kind of extreme, I guess, uh, of an example. Um, but the the panel, if they see those two very diverse types of waves, will get confused of what you might want to do, of what direction you want to do. In any time you upload work sample images, what you're really doing is you're telling a story. It's like a little mini exhibit of showcasing your artwork in direct comparison to the project. Um, and so any sort of kind of story that you can tell through the work samples that you choose um, is is effective. If every single image is very different from one another, um, the panel will likely be a little bit confused of, well, I don't know what direction they take. It might be this, it might be this. Um, and so there is, um, yeah. And so it is really kind of a, a point of kind of your personal curation of the story that you want to share with the panelists. Um, let's see. To apply, do you need to be accepted as a registered artist for public art and already be on file with the city? No, absolutely not. We don't have anything like that. Um, we do have something that's called a public art roster um, that we use specifically for some other opportunities, but this is an open call for application and absolutely anybody can apply. Um, we do have eligibility requirements that you are a resident of Washington 
Oregon or Idaho, um, but other than that, there is no pre-registration needed of any sort. Let's see, is there a station map on the City Light website to show where those are located? Um, for example, if we want to tailor the curbside artwork by the neighborhood, can we submit multiple pieces as this gets further along? Absolutely. And so, like, so what will happen with the selected artist is that that individual will meet with um, myself, representatives from Seattle City Light to really get a deep understanding of where these are and kind of the situation of which one, each one of them are sitting. Um, and so lots of site visits, lots of kind of thinking and determining of what is the best approach and where best to kind of like direct investment of the artwork that will be created to the different pedestals and lots. Um, are, next question, are these lots fully public or are any um, City of Seattle fleet or other City of Seattle in use? Um, that's a really great question. I believe they are all public lots. Um, I believe they're all public lots and Jacob, you can chime in if I, if I'm incorrect on that. No, you're correct. They're all public. Great. Great. Um, next question. Um, is, is professional experience as a design and construction project manager considered applicable support for completing projects within time and budget? Absolutely. I think being able to highlight that experience that you have kind of from the other side of managing other individuals and knowing what goes into a public, uh, like into a coordinated project is absolutely applicable to this. Um, a best placement for that would likely be in a biographical statement of which you could note that, um, that you've worked in that capacity and um, have have confidence that those skills would be transferable to being an artist in this situation. So um, then weight artist teams, yes or no? Artist teams, yes. Um, and then there's just a little bit, bit of um, kind of coordination in terms of the application and process that needs to be considered for artist teams. Let's see. I'm scrolling through. Where do we find information about the stakeholder groups? So this, the stakeholder groups, um, that will be my job to help with the selected artist to introduce you to those individuals. So the stakeholder groups largely are arts, the city of Seattle and, um, and um, city, city Light, excuse me. City Light does have a pretty extensive outreach team that has been working with different communities in terms of this project and other projects that will help if needed to, to um, connect you with resources for those individual com communities. This project is, is pretty broad based because these pedestals are throughout the city of Seattle. And so the neighborhoods really are diverse in nature throughout the city, um, as well as the lots, one in South Seattle and one in West Seattle. And so really kind of depending on the individual artist where they feel they want to kind of um, dig deep into, um, that will be my role to help the artist connect with those stakeholders as needed. Great. I'm not seeing any others pop up. up. Let's see. Oh, here's one that just came in. Would abstract designs work best? Not necessarily. I, I think I think what might work best is something that um, can be graphically reproduced successfully. Um, sometimes with um, re reproduction on vinyl and especially like a thermal plastic, a lot of the intricate details are lost. Um, and so what I would say would work better than others. Like if your artwork is very dependent upon, like in a 2D structure, if it's really dependent upon the te texture of the paint or something to be able to really be kind of fully realized, that might not be as successful as something that's 
um, more graphic in nature or easily readable, um, but abstract or realist is not a preference as part of this. And correct, last question that just came in, the green um, graphics on the charging station are not changing. Those are remaining in place. They're part of the overall branding of this. And so with the, with the pedestals, what we're really looking at is the concrete base, the conduit coming out of the side, if that wants to be wrapped of some sort, and the back side of the charging station facing the sidewalk and not the green graphics. I'm getting a little lull and the questions coming in. Um, to my other other panelists, Jason, Jacob, is there anything that I mentioned that you want to kind of reinforce or um, saw a question that I didn't, that I happened to skip through or anything like that? No, I would just encourage, you know, let everybody here know that, you know, this isn't the end of the questions. I mean, like if Maya posted her information is that, you know, definitely, you know, for us and for any public art project, you know, always check in with the project manager. You know, we're always happy to help and answer questions. So don't don't be afraid to call. Um, we're happy to talk. One question. Oh, came a couple late. more questions coming in. Um, so, th yes, this, there will be a recording available. It will be sent to everybody that has registered. That I, if I have your email address, you'll receive a copy of this, as as well as it will be embedded into the overall opportunities page. Um, um, mid next week. It usually takes us about a week to get that lined up for that. Um, let's see. And then are there minimums? What are the desired minimum standards for work sample images? Um, so in so we accept JPEGs, um, PNGs, and a couple of things, and like the size limit, it's more of a um, size um, maximum, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is listed in the work sample page. And so it says what types of files we accept as well as the maximum file size. And I want to, I don't know, I want to say like five, five meg, but I'm not entirely sure, but it will say that and it will, it won't accept it if it's too big. Um, how much of the finished product is desired for the application? Is it assumed that it will be edited or adjusted a bit once it gets accepted? So again, we're not looking for a proposal for this project. We are looking for, we're doing the application based on your past works. Um, and so we don't want artists spending the time um, of unpaid work developing a full proposal for this project. We're um, doing the jurying based on existing work. Um, and you're able to point out or describe um, what parts of your past work you feel is specifically relevant to this project, um, but we will not be seeking proposals for this work. Um, you, none, of the, none of the applicants have enough information to be able to fully kind of know all the parameters to be able to do so. Um, and so with that, the very first step will be is to dig deep into research, visit the site locations, talk to the project managers, um, learn a little bit more about these chargers, where they are and how they're used, um, and then, then at that point, develop a, a artwork concept. Great. And I'll just reinforce what Jason said. I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, easily reach out to me, email, phone, whatever works for you and definitely happy to chat more about this project. Um, I definitely um, hope you apply, apply early. Um, and yeah, we're excited to, we're excited to potentially work with you and really thankful that you um, are excited about this 
of, excited about this project and seek to work with our office. Wonderful, great. And with that, I'll say thank you. I see no further questions. And again, this will be available um, uh, online for re review um, if, if you so choose. And I'm gonna stop the recording.